What constitutes true happiness? Is it the accumulation of wealth, the possession of cars, or living a luxurious lifestyle? Perhaps. However, the ancient wisdom of Solon, the Athenian, suggests an alternative perspective. It beckons us to explore beyond material pursuits and invites contemplation on the deeper aspects of well-being. Solon, in his quest to explore the world, journeyed first to Egypt to visit Amasis and then to Sardis to meet with Croesus. Upon his arrival, Croesus graciously hosted him in the palace. After a few days, Croesus instructed his attendants to showcase his treasures to Solon, pointing out all the magnificent and blessed possessions. Following a thorough inspection, Croesus, considering himself the most fortunate of men, seized the opportunity to inquire of Solon, renowned for his wisdom and travels, about the most fortunate person he had encountered. Expecting a response in his favor, Croesus was taken aback when Solon, devoid of flattery and adhering to the truth, declared, O king, it is Tellus the Athenian. Perplexed, Croesus pressed for an explanation, demanding to know why Tellus was deemed the most fortunate. Solon elaborated, recounting Tellus's origins in a prosperous city, the goodness and nobility of his children, their successful survival, and the glorious end to Tellus's life. In a heroic act during the Athenians' conflict with their neighbors in Eleusis, Tellus came to their aid, triumphed over the enemy, and met his demise with great valor. The Athenians, acknowledging his noble sacrifice, buried him at public expense on the very battlefield where he fell, bestowing upon him considerable honor. Solon, not swayed by Croesus's hope of being ranked second among fortunate individuals, answered the question about who came after Tellus. Croesus, expecting praise for his own success, was eager to hear Solon's judgment. However, Solon identified Cleobus and Biton as the next most fortunate. Cleobus and Biton, who descended from Argive lineage, not only had the resources for a comfortable life, but also demonstrated impressive physical strength, winning athletic contests. Solon shared a significant episode from their lives. During a Hera festival in Argos, when their oxen were delayed returning from the fields, the youths, constrained by time, willingly took on the task of carrying the yoke themselves. They pulled the wagon with their mother on top of it, covering a five-mile distance to reach the temple. This remarkable achievement stood as the pinnacle of their lives, and it was at this moment that divine intervention hinted that, for humans, a noble death might surpass a long life. The Argive community, observing the spectacle, gathered around the youths, applauding their strength, while the women praised their mother for having such exceptional children. Overwhelmed with joy, she stood before the goddess's image, offering a prayer for the best blessings to be bestowed upon Cleobus and Beton. In response to their mother's prayer, the youths, after participating in a sacrificial feast, lay down in the temple to rest. To the astonishment of all, they never awoke again. Death claimed them in that sacred space. Recognizing their exceptional virtue, the Argives commissioned and dedicated statues of Cleobus and Beton at Delphi, immortalizing them as the epitome of human excellence. Thus Solon granted second place in happiness to these men. Croesus was vexed and said, My Athenian guest, do you so much despise our happiness that you do not even make us worth as much as common men? Solon replied, Croesus, when you inquire about human affairs, I acknowledge that the divine is often capricious and challenging for us. Over a long span of time, one can witness and endure many undesired experiences. I define a person's lifespan as 70 years, comprising 25,200 days. In this duration, no two days are alike, illustrating the randomness of human existence. Thus, Croesus, a person's fate is mostly a matter of chance. While you appear very rich and rule over many people, I cannot answer your question about fortune until I know how your life concludes. A very wealthy individual is not necessarily more fortunate than someone with basic needs, unless their life ends well. It is crucial to observe how every affair concludes, as the gods may promise fortune to many, only to ultimately ruin them. By saying this, 
Solon did not at all please Croesus, who sent him away without regard for him, but thinking him a great fool, because he ignored the present good and told him to look to the end of every affair.